And what it does, it leads people. It leads people like you and like me to lead lives that Thoreau called lives of quiet desperation. Why? Because people wake up in the morning and they begin to believe that stuff about themselves. They begin to believe that they are their past. They are their history. I'm not saying that there isn't evidence out there. I'm not saying that this friend of Judy's in Pensacola could not find evidence that says there is silicone that is leaked into my body and because of that silicone, these are some of the things that are happening to me. I'm not saying that there isn't evidence about that. I'm not saying that there isn't evidence that you and I grew up in a family that didn't work especially well. But hell, what would you expect? We didn't even let women vote or own property in this country less than a hundred years ago. Of course it would be a dysfunctional family based on some model. The problem I have is not that there is evidence out there. The problem I have is that you and I are being taught that we are the evidence. We go and we listen to wonderful, loving people who talk about our past and tell stories and say, does this sound familiar? And we go, yeah. Does this sound familiar? Yeah. Did this happen to you? Yeah. And then they say, well, this is who you are. And we begin to believe that more than we believe the heart of religious science, which is the first two steps of treatment. What that's about is that, you know, I got all this past, I got this history, of course I'm sick. I'm immersed in this disease. I'm about to have the 18th surgery on my spine. Well, who does that make you? That makes me the crowning achievement of the living God. Who do you think you are? <laughs> You're free. You and I are finally free. And I'll tell you, it's stated as cleanly as I've ever heard it, right here in Living the Science of Mind by Ernest Holmes. And on page 145, he says, The truth that sets us free is not the introduction of some higher power onto a lower plane. The truth that sets us free is the knowledge that in truth there is no higher and lower planes. The old model was one like this. Put your finger and thumb out like that. The old model was that, that you put it down. <laughs> the old model was that this thing on the upper part was our spiritual truth, our spiritual self. And the thumb, the lower part, was our human nature. So we've got our spiritual nature and our human nature. And the old model was that you and I have to do something to rise above our human nature. Whether we call it the small self, the ego self, or the ego-centered priorities, all those classy little names that still make this part second-class citizens. And then when we rise above this physical self to a spiritual understanding of self, then something happens. This game is absolutely about duality and separation. And in this model, you and I are second-class citizens, and what we get to do is fight the good fight, but you never get to be there. And I want to tell you something. Religious science is not about this model. Take your finger and thumb again. Put it out like this. <laughs> Religious science is about turning that model this way. This is what Ernest said. Now you put your hand down. See, on this, on this level, our human nature and spiritual nature stand side by side as the co-creators of this thing we call life. <coughs> there is no small self. Oh, I might have beliefs that speak of limitation, but that's no better than having beliefs that speak of abundance. They're just beliefs. And my beliefs create reality. You and I get so programmed out there in the world that we need to fight the good fight, that we need to go deal with darkness. Deal with your stuff. It's like, I'll tell you, dealing with your stuff is like going into a dark room and shutting the door, and then trying to get the darkness out. <laughs> darkness out of a dark room is you light a match, and immediately upon bringing the light to the darkness, the darkness disappears. That's the freedom you and I see. That's the, that's the guts of religious science. Religious science starts with the idea that you're magnificent, and your consciousness creates reality. And it's all a big game. You see, Ernest goes on further when he's talking about, on page 145, when he says, the truth that sets you free is not the introduction of some higher power to a lower plane, it is the knowledge that, in truth, there is no higher and lower planes. And then he goes on to say, when you understand this, cause and effect, therefore, become a plaything. Use the 
using the power of God to create reality becomes a plaything, and karma and kismet become bubbles to be blown about. Which means that you and I can stand absolutely in the evidence surrounded by saying, you are diseased. And because of the truth of who we are, we can go, and they go away. You and I stand as a spiritual family. We stand at the great chasm that has faced the human species since the beginning of time. And on this side of the chasm is the subtle references to ego, small self, duality, separation. And there's an inference that that's who we are. But if we stay on this side with those labels, no matter how cute they are today, not only do we condemn ourselves to one struggle after another, one more thing to deal with after another, we condemn all humanity. But the opportunity that stands in front of us today is to step across that chasm and finally claim once and for all the only truth that sets us free, and that is that I'm a spiritual being living in a spiritual universe governed by spiritual laws. And when I own that truth, I have absolute authority over this game I call my life. Whereas if you say something like that, you're going to say, who do you think you are? My friends, there is a new model of life, a new model of therapy. That's the thing I like about Sabrina. Since I have known her, she heals people. When we talk, I said, so what's your biggest challenge in your practice? She says, everybody that comes to me, I heal them, and then I have to get new clients. <laughs> I know therapists who've had the same client for five years, and they're assisting them to deal with their stuff better. I'm not into dealing with my stuff better. I want to eliminate my stuff. I want to tell you, after 30 spinal operations, I do not have a bad back. I am not recovering from a bad back. The name of my book is called The Hell I King. Uniquely expressing this need. What do I choose to do with this fear? 